Okay, so we're gonna move on to the monofilament test, which is a light touch threshold test. It's more quantitative than perhaps the Q-tip or, um, or the dull portion of the safety pin. Up on the hub will be this uh, document. It has some good information just about the procedures, the monofilaments themselves. Um, on the back, it has some additional information explaining a little more about uh, the color or uh, the size of the monofilament. What I'm using today is a five uh, monofilament set. There are some kits that are much larger, but um, a lot of times clinically it's easier uh, to put a portable five piece in your pocket. Uh, I think you'll see this probably most often used. The smallest monofilament is the 2.83, and in some reference, uh, it's listed as green. Some people will use a pen that has multiple colors to shade um, according onto the hand, the colors that correspond with the loss of sensation, or um, if they're normal, then you would see green. However, on this set, uh, green isn't on here. Okay, so some of the monofilament sets won't have that, but they'll have the size that corresponds. And basically the monofilament is similar to what you would think of fishing line in just various diameters. So 2.83 is considered normal. Um, and so what we're gonna do is similar testing procedures before, you can have your client rest their hand onto some putty that takes away the extraneous movement when you're actually applying the monofilament. Okay, um, this putty's a little awkward. All right, it helps if you're in a quiet place. Um, however, hand clinics and rehab gyms are often not quiet. Um, particularly for this test, I would recommend that you do try to remove as much distraction as possible, okay, uh, for your client. I tend to start with 3.61, which is one step above, um, it's your first step into abnormal, and it's a diminished light touch. Um, I think one reason I start here is because oftentimes, particularly if somebody's had a hand injury, they may not feel that normal, so this gives them a chance of, of hopefully feeling something. Um, it also gives me an idea which way I need to go in the monofilament set. Another thing that we run into in the hand clinic um, quite often, and you'll see in neuro population, you'll really see it particularly this part of the country, is highly calloused hands. A lot of our workers, um, folks that have a lot of callus buildup, okay? And so they will have trouble uh, particularly feeling that normal, the 2.83. In that case, I think clinic, with clinical judgment, you, you just document that they do have a high presence of callus formation, okay? So the hand is placed so that we removed any extraneous movement. Uh, you'll ask the, the client to once again either close their eyes, uh, they can look away if that helps, um, or you can hold a piece of paper or something up in front of them. All right, so monofilament, like I said, is, is uh, tiny little strand of what seems like fishing line. We're gonna follow the similar pattern that we used before as far as radial, ulnar, and median nerve. Um, you can obviously start on the non-affected if they have a side that wasn't injured. Um, if you have a, a, a patient or a client that has had nerve injury or laceration type injuries to both sides, you may not have a normal side. But once again, uh, showing them the monofilament and the procedure. You're gonna come straight down, pressing into the skin until you see the monofilament bend. Okay, this is, it's a static test. You don't, you don't stay and hold. Now, I'll show you what that did. You see the bend and you relief off. Now one, you saw that slide off the finger. Okay, that happens sometimes and if the hands are really dry, that will happen. Um, and some of it's just technique. You get used to being able to see where that monofilament is. And you slowly touch the skin 
get the bin and come off. And it's either a, it's a yes, no answer, whether they feel a touch or not, okay? So there may, and I tell the client, I may not touch you. Don't get concerned if I say yes or no and you, you don't feel anything, okay? Um, because I may not touch you every single time. So we're not gonna we're not gonna drag the skin. We're not gonna. Are you sure you can't feel that? Um, we're not gonna take the edge of the monofilament and poke them. Basically, it comes down at a ninety degree angle and back up. Okay, for the first two filaments, which is two point eight three and the three point six one. I want to make sure I'm telling you right. Yes, those are gonna be a three trial. Um, so would actually apply that in a three trial. One out of three it, it equals a correct response. Once you move to the higher monofilaments, then it's just a one time. You don't have to t try three times on those. Okay? So let's do a little practice run here. Eyes open or closed? We're going to have you close your eyes. Okay. Um, similar pattern on the sheet here. As far as ulnar side of the hand, okay, um, this form does add a thumb tip, which would be medial, like before you saw. Um, back here on the thumb would be radial. That's the only difference in this sheet compared to the other, okay? You ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so, wiping the hand, it's almost like I'm erasing the chalkboard and now we've got a clean slate. Um, and I will simply ask them it, to respond yes or no if I'm touching you. Yes. Okay. Yes or no? Yes. And yes or no? No. Okay. So, for her, she that's normal in her ulnar pattern, okay? And you would repeat this in those um, sites for the different nerves. If she feels this, then there's no need to go down, okay? Because we obviously know she's gonna feel that. So what I would do, and, and I usually tell them, there may be a pause, you may be hear me clicking a little, and that's just me changing filaments, okay? okay. So once again, close your eyes. I'm gonna go right back where I was. Yes or no? I don't know, I could only feel. Sorry, that's a big, <laughs> that's a great point. It's so, it's so habit forming to lay the hand. Perfect. Um, is not to have other things touching on. Perfect. Yes or no? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. And yes or no? Maybe. Yes. Okay. So, she felt the normal sensation. So, on the chart, I would either document uh, ulnar dis distribution uh, with the normal limits. On this sh sheet, on the volar surface um, of the right hand, which would be this hand, I could mark the color green. Okay. I'm going to show you. This is the highest filament, and you can definitely see the difference. Um, and I have had folks that can't feel that. Okay, this one is not necessarily gonna, you're not gonna see the bend as well, okay? But you see the skin blanch underneath. If you continue to push this one as hard as you can, um, you're, gonna, you're gonna push pretty hard before you get a bend. So on this one, I watch for, for blanching, okay? So it's really a matter of moving up and down in your monofilaments. And I will tend to uh, complete one section uh, before I move on. It's just easier for me to keep track if I'm, you know, a particular nerve or a particular area of the hand. Mm -hmm. Scar tissue, the presence of scars on the hand uh, can alter some sensation. And that's, once again, that's something you just need to document. Um, you know, if we can state the facts and then if the doctor has an interpretation that's different, that's fine. Uh, but we can at least give them that that scenario. Burn scars, of course, would be something else that uh, could alter uh, somebody's sensation. Mm 